How are you today? I'm very well, William. Well, I'm so glad that you made it on our show. What we want to talk about is something that maybe came through your life that transformed you, influenced you, or how the how a time when maybe uh, you didn't have it quite together or think of it quite right or something where you thought it out and you 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 maybe got off the path and. Something that happened that uh, transformed you or changed your life? Sure. Uh, I know the exact point and time, pretty much how old I was when that happened. When the Holy Spirit just tapped over, came over. Now, prior, as a child, prior to nine, I didn't know nothing about the Holy Spirit or or things like that. I, I was kind of familiar with it, we had something called a vacation Bible school thing. And it was in a Baptist church. I grew up Baptist from a small town in Alabama called Florence, Alabama. No, we had no, a, no. Yeah, yeah, I did. No, no, so we, not Florence, Alabama. Uh, that one. Do you, know, uh, do you know I come out of Florence, Alabama, uh, a.k.a. Killing, Alabama? I know exactly where that is. Okay, I'm glad I, I wish I had known. It's just so our families are so ex- broad yes. and so depth, so to speak. Continuing on what my transformation, I'm pretty sure it was, that we had a, um, at this kind of mourner's bench. I'm not, I'm going to call that all. And there were several, and we, they prayed and they prayed and they prayed and they prayed and, Bam, you know, I kind of like a, jumped up like a kind of shouting like that as at the age of nine. Then that kind of sealed things, um, transforming me from fear to freedom. That's what that did to me. And you know, and to this day, that transformation still stands, not to be afraid of any man. Um which is a good thing to do and to love man as well, best as I can. So let me ask you, um, when you say you were eight or nine, mm-hmm. uh, and you said you overcame this fear, is there any way that you might could touch on what this fear or how is that yeah. eight or nine year old you were in fear? I'll tell you exactly, I'll tell you exactly what it is. First of all, I lived in, which you know, Alabama, during a segregated time when it was segregated. Not only that, um, so most of, most of my life experience was in the black community. Now, I can even narrow that down to even more um, into my own family where you know I have a father who's not strong or not a kind of nice father. So you have that fear 
my my wife my dad was the kind of tough guy so you have that fear and then you have the fear of just growing up in the south during the 50s so that fear was there and um the other fear is lack of education not having great education maybe even at nine when you see um the difference in different people who have better educational tools um s- schools teachers etc and i grew up in a two room um uh, school uh the name of the school was called pine ridge elementary school and it had the first second and third grade in one half of it and the uh fourth and sixth in the other half so pretty much the fear of you know we kind of grew up with clue cook plan people and things like that excuse me mm-hmm. okay i i get what you're saying but for a 9 year old you spoke on segregation uh the family things i can really relate because I guess you would say my father was kind of like a tough guy too, you know. Mm-hmm. He was too tough really, but anyway, that's a lot to be going through at such a young age. And it seemed like at 9 when mm-hmm. the spirit hit you and this transformation and you this this thing came over you that you were saying there was no more fear. Mm-hmm. And, and and you expressed some of these fears. But at 9 years old when this transformation took place how did you know that you were no longer afraid of certain things Well I don't know how you can anybody can explain their that moment the moment between um it's a pivotal moment It was it was many about when you were young and you were at 9 you had these different fears and the question mm-hmm. was at 9 how what 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 was it that made this transformation uh so vivid in your life at 9 how were you able to to know that you arrived got over the hump weren't afraid anymore or anything of that nature other people help the freedom of other people Oh, you know, people who are black. You see walking around. <laughs> pretty much, it's pretty much I hope I didn't stop. But yeah. the, the, the 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 I just think they having a strong faith. So, let me just say how every how I was able to come to the same feeling that I had at 9 is the same feeling that I have today from other people talking the world of people coming the older people you know they're faith they all in church and all of that not everyone but in my environment most of my family attended church as a child I didn't want to go to no church I had to because my mom made me <laughs> go to church yeah, you know but, that but, but as I say again I just really believe a pivotal moment was about then I can say 9 but I'm pretty sure prior to 8 7 8 maybe up in there it was growing but for the most part I come to believe came to believe that you know there's a god there is something there in spite of all the stuff that happens and could happen to me I still wanted to believe that there was a god having that sense I just kind of it's been in me for a long time that god is able and can and will help me and have faith so um I have always operated like that even as a child and as a child I can't beat up nobody <laughs> couldn't do that just you know what I got only thing my strength was my faith so I and maybe I didn't know at that time that my strength was my faith but I knew something was there clicking. Well, tell me sir um hmm? as we come through and we grow up and you you have this strength or this this we'll just say the holy spirit and it's in you 
But would it be safe to say that even though you had that feeling that as you went through life, there were still challenges where you had to lean on that faith, where you, where maybe you got off the path and, or... No, I, I didn't get off no path. Okay. And it, is, it has been a straight line is what I'm, what I'm saying. Um, that thing we want to say in that strength. Like now we're talking about the strength. There's also something called the power. So I'll just, I'll focus on what you're saying. The strength, the ability to be able to get up and not go lose all of your self motions and things like that and to become terrified of, of what happens. I want to live a life like that. I want to live a life of fear of stuff, people, things. I just, I, at that early age, I said, I don't want to be, I, I am not going to be fearful anymore, <laughs> period. So you learn how to have um, courage and, you, and I do things. I was hugely a shy person. I mean, I, I, I was a hugely a shy, at, at, you know, just going into um, just, High school, junior high, or after junior high or high school. Yeah, I was pretty, I was, I was that way. What got me through all of that, and here's another thing that what got me through it, is still the love of other people. I mean, personally, I'm on, I'll speak about myself. I could beat myself up about something, a simple thing like, I, 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 I'm going to come back. I hope I'm not too far off the, the mark. A simple thing like um, I got a birthday card from my wife. Now, when I got that card, I said, "Yeah, she don't like my card, not like my card." This is, this is, and I struggle all over that, and I started to pull the card back and not give it to her. But she got there, found the card before I found. I knew it. The peace of mind and the courage comes from letting go and letting God deal with it. You have your life. Not me trying to control my own life. It never was any strength in me trying to co control my own life. I, I operate a lot in the world of helping people who are compulsive gamblers. It takes four between three and four people to make a compulsive gambler. How many people does it take to make a sinner? How many people does it take to make a righteous person? A marriage to keep a marriage it, it, it is such a critical for me to let go of other people worrying about them things like that concern death dying injuries can't so the power now i you didn't this I, i'm asking I'm, I'm referring to the strength comes from god now where does the power come from the action <clears throat> Power comes out for me out of the ability to act, go forth, <laughs> go forth and do the things that I'm encouraging you to do for me, whether that's be, being having more courage. I'm a Marine, so I'm part of that Vietnam era Marine thing. So and my job in the Marines was a, was real serious, <clears throat> yeah, deadly serious. Even something like that, calling on the high power to help me to get through that angle, boom. There's just so many wonderful miracles, I'm going to call them, that I, me, have just personally experienced by just knowing and calling on God. And I can't, God, I can't find my keys. Turn one way and you found your keys. It's just such an interesting thing. The word I want to use is abide in God and the Holy Spirit. Abide there. And when I live there, a uh, sense of peace, there's just this overwhelming sense of contentment. Well, what I want to get to, sir, is you spoke about the card and your wife. And then we went to mm. Vietnam and 
We're talking about the strength, okay. the courage, and these things. In your in these passings, in these um times when you were in war and things, uh, were there situations where you really didn't know how this was going to turn out, or you didn't understand how it wasn't like a, like you were saying, it wasn't um, maybe they'll like it, maybe they won't. You were talking about a life and death situation. That's that's what I took when you said um, I was in the Marines and my situation was deadly. In other words, your life could be yeah. on the line. So it. In any of those moments, and I know God is with you, and God is with a lot of people, and there's times when we have to call on his faith or when we don't have answers for everything, serious answers. And and I just would like for you to share with us in those times, after 9 o'clock, after 9 years old, after meeting these people, after growing through high school, after being shy, I don't see how you're being shy and in the Marines, but if you say so, in life, in life itself, it's a, it's a good cover to say that we, we have God in our hearts and we know God. I do too. But there are times Controls. when I had to call on God. There were times when my faith had to be in God, not where I needed it or something, but where... I demonstrated my faith. And and in some of those situations, family, war, I'm almost certain something had to come up to demonstrate your strength, your courage in your faith. What are you, are you looking for the something else? Yeah, like something in, for instance, when you said about the card in your wife, Say that one more time. But my wife, I was, I had a little apprehension whether or not she would like the card. Okay. But the card was, it was a funny card. And it just, when I looked at it immediately, I don't know what this is, happens to people. You'd be looking for something and all of a sudden you see it. <laughs> it's just, I'm looking for this and all of a sudden you see it. It's kind of like the scripture that deals with the gentleman who finds, finds a treasure in the field. I mean, he's looking for all of it, looking for all of a sudden he sees the treasure. So all of a sudden, not knowing to me that my wife found the card and she picks it up and she reads it and it said, press me for a special birthday message. And so she was pressing, pressing, pressing on it. And then it opened up and it says, press me from, from, when she opened it up, she was just impressed with it. So, that as for good. me being, it was very good, but I wasn't sure if, you know, if it was going to be good or not. I don't vacillate away from, from God at all. I just Amen. don't. I'm hugely tethered there. I do go out of my way to find other people and see how, what they're feeling or thinking. And um, I have neighbors, I'm a neighbor, <laughs> that I visit and we go there and we talk about stuff, and which is good. All the miracles add up to something. They all come together to say, you can trust in God. I tell myself, I must trust in God. <laughs> so no matter what the what's on the road, I come in my way, I think, that was a little bit of part of the question. It's going to come. And I don't have time to be afraid when it comes. You know, well, when when that boogeyman is at my door, I don't have no time to be no afraid of that boogeyman. Now, the boogeyman could be just whatever else you want to be. But for me, from a child, I told myself, I, 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 refuse to be afraid of the boogeyman. I used to wet the bed. I was so afraid. <laughs> Seriously. Okay, okay. I would, uh, maybe you can wet that out, but the fear. But after this transformation, I never wet the bed anymore. Let me ask you it's something. Just a, Let me ask you go. something else too. Mm -hmm. As, okay, there's no fear. Just a question. When go. God blessed you <clears throat> with the uh, 
with your helpmate, mm -hmm. and you were going to give your wife the card and was a little apprehensive. What do you think it was like when you wanted to get married and all of that? 1,000%. Billion. 1,000%. Okay. Man, I was going to cut down on them. My, my wife, I was trying to, I was trying to, I was. Do I need like to cut this? Up. Do I need to cut this, brother? Uh, I hope you don't. Okay. But Go on and tell it. I think you, when you're very young, for me, I was not ready to be getting married to nobody. So at that time, I still want to be young, man. I was in college and I met my wife and I was kind of jumped down. I was trying to flee from her. But my mom told me, she says, no, he's right there. But my mom, <laughs> she read, and I call up my mom. I said, mom, why did you do that? <laughs> and she gave me her answers. And so she says, well, you need to take care of your own business and go ahead and do that. I don't know if it was being fearful. I just think at that, that time, I just kind of wanted to not be married. And I I believe my thinking was from my parents and their marriage and their relationship and how it didn't all go sour and things like that. So I wasn't really too keen on marriage. But I did say I'm committed when I do marriage. I've been married 54 years and still Man. counting. There's so many challenges in a marriage. It's just amazingly. But there's all the same thing. It's just really the problem is one's self or myself. Can't do no about nothing about anybody else. But I sure can do a whole bunch about me in a relationship with anyone, a friend, an acquaintance. I hear what you're saying, and my brother, I've been married one time. And I don't have that track record that you're speaking of. I just can't sit here and think that you've been married 54 years in that marriage, being that we are um, people that make mistakes. We're not perfect and things of this nature. And I've been in war as well. So some things you're saying to me, I hear you, but I just can't believe that 54 years, you know, there had, I just. You know, let me tell you, you know what the message is? What's the mess? For me, for me, forgiveness. <laughs> forgiveness. Now, at an early age, say 30, 35 years of life cheating on you, can one forgive? Or, a whole bunch of other things, you know, the, the whole, a lot of things can come down in a marriage. The ultimate way, if you, then we go back to when I was nine, <clears throat> I made my mind up that once I commit to A, B, C, D, or G, I'm committed. And I wasn't ready to be committed to my wife at that time, so that's the reason why I kind of flee. But now I am here, <clears throat> there is this thing of um, vows or oaths or responsibilities for pretty much a vow, a V-O-W. And in marriages, there are plural vows. So um, a one vow could be sickness. Another vow could be um now, unfaithfulness. Uh, uh, well, these are vows. I like to believe that vows are things that I agree that I, in my contract, that I have with myself and with somebody else. So I just find out that, kind of like in my own mom and dad's marriage, they have some issues, Jack. And any one person can fix the issue, can stop, is, is learning when and how to stop being an emotion. I mean, I'm really, really trying to say this for people who are listening to this, who are married and divorced or separated. Uh, my first 10 years of marriage was absolutely great. The next 30 years was horrible, horrible, horrible. And then the next, I'm in the next 10 years now and they're great. And I'm hugely content. 
for, forgiveness is keen. <clears throat> I mean, as hard as as hard as it is, it is hard, man. It is it is something, it, and is it? I I like to believe in the Lord's prayer. So deep in that prayer is forgiveness towards Him and to us. That then there's this other component behind forgiveness. Okay, I forgive you. Then, but you still you still slap me up out of the head and you did this. So how, what do I do to hold you accountable? That was the challenge that I had in regards to something like this. It'd be just about anything, but it is, it is the accountability portion of it. Tell me this. Um, yeah. 10 years versus 30 years. That's a long time. That's I mean, the Holy Spirit carrying you, man. Yeah, no. That's now that, that's now, some now heavy. We, now we're starting to get a little deep here. Uh, uh, now that's some. That's what I want to know because I don't know that's about a, your situation, but in oh, my man, situation, terrible. it had huh. to be the Holy Spirit to carry me. I it's got to be, and that's it's, it. So I want to. Now we're kind of getting in. I would like to know. Uh, some of those times when maybe that strength and encouragement and those people and all that kind of got heavy on you to where, like you're saying, that forgiveness thing. And that and that is something that is uh, really so profound that you said that. A lot of times people say, I'm sorry, but they really don't forgive you. They'll carry it. They'll throw it up in your face. Mm -hmm. And when you walk like that, or you're involved in situations like that, mm -hmm. that's what I'm saying. I personally, I got out the situation. I threw in the towel. I just, okay. you know, I, I just didn't want to deal no more. And in your situation, it sounds more like um, this Holy Spirit, this thing that you're talking about. There was something that rooted you, these vows, this commitment that made whatever it was that that made the situation like it was, it seemed like it took a, a minute, 30 years or something, for something to, to take place or a change. Because then you said the 10 years after that, everything, you know, it's just beautiful. We could hop over that and get to this 30-year part and strength, courage, Holy Spirit. What held it to get to where you can truly see God's blessings, to where you can sit back now and say it was worth it? The impetus that makes me be this, and I said my dad was a, was a, was a hard rock, and in his marriage he just didn't, three or four women, he used and abused and uh, lots of children and things like that. I just said, that ain't a life for me. <laughs> now, lo and behold, no one knows what someone else's life is like and what it's going to be, especially when it's added to a mixture of a marriage. I don't even know the definition of marriage, but it, it's shit of two people loving each other. Now, sometimes, somewhere in the road, there are these blockages, or a block, or something will come up, a wound. <laughs> I will mostly say a wound. That's good. Wounds don't, wound just don't start when you're in the marriage with somebody else. A wound don't. I like to believe me, I had, I carried my wounds. <laughs> So I don't know about nobody else, I say, but it's the wound. And so, if you were wounded as I was wounded as a child, seeing all that stuff that happened in my mother and father's marriage, it's going to make a difference. It's a wound. And to see things change so drastically, um, where they just don't love each other and cannot forgive each other. I don't have their lives, and they were on a whole lot of whatever it is that they're doing their ex early years of life they experience. It's just, the, it's just the thing that makes it happen is understanding 
in accepting the wound. And the other part is, like we say, the Holy Spirit runs through all of it. It is so much more important to have others in your life, trustworthy others who have your interests, not just theirs. In my marriage, I think I have had other people who have been so significant in the whole long run, long, long, the run of it, and continues that. Um, quick side story, in the 30 years um, of an of a issue, of a controlling issue, hopefully we won't go much longer on the interview, but in, mari in my marriage, um, control was an issue. I always go back to a childhood when a child can't have the freedom to do what they want. Somebody's saying, you can't do this or you, that. It happens in a marriage and people carry it on up until they're in a relationship. Stuff that they have, wounds they have in their childhood years um, can come out in their later years as a marriage. Now, starting the 11th year of my marriage, it's just started dripping away. And as it sort of dripped away, I said, okay, now, am I going to be like my mom and my dad? Or I'm just going to drift away as well? Or am I going to follow my vows, my, my commitment to do or be something? Yes, sir. But, but, but sir, like, mm -hmm. like you're saying, um, after the 11th year, uh, and I really, really appreciate the fact that you, you're not pushing this off on anybody else. You know, I don't like that either, like trying to point the finger at other people. What you're saying, and, and, and we as men need to do this a lot. Look at ourselves and see, you know, we're not always right. You know, we might want to be right, but we're not always right. And we don't, and I know about that controlling. I know about a little bit about the environment that you're speaking of. And mm. after that 11th year, and, and I won't take it too much further, but after that mm. 11th year, when things started happening like that, um, where was the strength? The that, strength was that always vow, there. That vow it was vow. never, it never changed. It would, what, it what, never, what, it never, it never ever. Now the fear, okay, the peace. What well, the fear? What, what, what happened if I'm going to divorce? That that was, or get separated, or have a mediation divorce. All that stuff. And all if for me, I'm speaking about me, myself, oh, and only. I hear you. All of that that stuff I had already pretty frame or pre pre played in my head so it's kind of like you have somebody you love and that person dies what are you gonna how are you gonna what's the motion after that person dies is it's important to have other people helping you in your marriage it's kind of like an addiction it takes four people to make make a person addicted in our marriage you say how many people does it take that i need to have in my marriage to lose my marriage i mean how do i need a whole bunch of friends <clears throat> do i need a whole bunch of people do i need a whole bunch of others <clears throat> do and then it, just think about it within a relationship how many people in your environment others does it take to ruin your marriage and how many people in others does it take to maintain and keep your life and i can't do this for nobody else for no one it's just that your mind has to be committed to something else you're going to wobble you're not going to be able to stand on anything when you're like a broken screen door when you can't the hinges up when something an experience comes your way especially in your marriage i mean 
where all the emotion, but this person knows every doggone thing about you. And hopefully, you know, pretty much about the other person. But it is that thing that divides in a marriage. I have had lots of other people to help me in my relationship. In the 30 years, it was seemingly, it was just me. But just enduring the vow, <laughs> enduring the commitment. Because on the other end, it's just you can see, you feel, you, it's the the vision on the other end. What is it like to have a a marriage where you are 100% content with this person? <laughs> what is that like? What's that know. like? I don't know. You can't, you you can't see the body. But there are you, people that can talk about that. But deep down inside, my life has said, everything's going to be okay. Keep well, plugging. Well, my, well, my brother, <laughs> okay. I, like, I like that it's going to be okay. And I know there's more. If there was something that you could give someone, some advice or someone that might be afraid or might run into a spot in their marriage or might be going to war or something or this experience that you went through or not the experiences you went through, but this faith that you grabbed a hold of at a young age and how it grew in your life and how things manifested and how it showed itself to be victorious in so many of your situations in your life. What advice would you give someone? You got to trust yourself. Definitely. You have one must trust that they can trust God. So uh, I don't have any, any advice. I just say encourage people to find the treasure that keeps them alive and gives them happiness. So is there any one specific word that is of encouragement is to, maybe to, but to believe. And you, I just want to maybe just, there's something about, it's like coming to believe in something. You believe. You believe in your success. You believe in your, I believe I'm loving. I believe I'm happy. I believe I'm content with my life. So it's a good thing to just let things go and let put it in the hands of someone who can do a much better job than yourself, my marriage. Pick a, any addiction, pick anything that you like. I don't know if you can over love God because I'm addicted to God. It has been helpful in my marriage not to have the number of people it takes to ruin my marriage. I don't have very many of my friends who are married nowhere even near or close to me. And I, I'm not doubting them, but I know what my problems were. And I know to fix my marriage, I needed to fix me. And when I fix me, when I fix me, <laughs> It just made a big difference. It's just, it's, you can't, I can't, you, one cannot fix nobody, but you can fix them through fixing yourself. All I want to do now is just, best, as much as I can every day, abide in God, even with my own sins and addictions I got, I still want to be there. I still want to, I don't want to run, I don't want to flee. I don't want to say I didn't do this and knowing that I did do this Amen. is is learning to be true to me. Maybe down the road, if we ever come up with something again, we'll come up and we'll meet again. And I will be getting in touch with you, cousin. Fantastic. Well, another episode of Where Were You? And we would like to thank our guests for this evening. Also want to thank New Me. New Me helped sponsor Where Were You? So go on and check it out. New me forward slash Arcway. Also, go on and hit that like. Go on and hit subscribe. Go on and hit that share. 
Go on and leave a comment. And if you find anyone that has a story, let me know. And hey, you bless someone today.